welcome to the Dr. John Char uh, Holistic Health Show. In our last show, we discussed about the to dental toxicity uh, referring from the fillings, coming from the fillings. We're going to talk more about that and we're going to go more into detail and we're going to be talking about safe dental equipment that uh, if you go to a dentist and having your fillings out, what kind of equipment do you expect uh, to have the dentists have to protect your safety, um, protect you from inhaling all the vapors, mercury vapors, and uh, having it go down your mouth in terms of the, uh, the, the scrap metals and things like that. We're going to be talking about the dentures, braces, partial dentures, gold crowns, porcelain crowns, implants, and composites. And are they safe for your body? So let's talk about dental equipment. If you went to a dentist and um, if you were having your fillings out, or any type of fillings you have, what is the most danger uh, from uh, toxic uh, elements that can get into your body? What is the most, the, the, the time that you, when you come into the dentist, have your dental work done, what is the most dangerous time when you can cr get these toxic elements into your body? Well, for one of the first things you do is that they say that the greatest amount of uh, toxicity you can get when you're doing dental work is when you first place a mercury filling in or when you take it out. And um, Adrian, <coughs> remember you talked about the um, dental toxicity in your mouth from the electrical currents, okay? Tell me about what your experience was when you, when you, um, went to the seminar and then you they talked about what you have as far as a warning in the dental fillings itself. I mean, <coughs> when you went to, uh, um, to look into the dental uh, materials. Oh, okay, the contraindications. The contraindications, yeah. Okay, yes. Um, they say, first of all, uh, do not install mercury amalgams. Uh, adjacent to other dissimilar metals, mm -hmm. okay, like crowns. Uh, mainly from an engineering viewpoint, you when you have two different metals, you know, with your saliva mm -hmm. as an electrolyte, it, you have galvanic reaction right there. Mm -hmm. And um, th th this is really, you know, something that people are not aware of, that to have <coughs> galvanic reaction occurring in your mouth, could be very harmful to you. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the <clears throat> other things that was scary that I mentioned was it says do not install mercury fillings if you have kidney problems. Right. And many, most dentists probably have no clue about the patient's kidney condition at the time they're doing any dental work. No, most pa most uh, dentists don't take uh, blood pressure, right? Well, I don't know about blood pressure, you, but uh, even yeah, if they check blood pressure, that still would indicate uh, the condition of your kidneys. Well, it would, because in terms oh. of the ki kidneys cr can create some high blood pressure yeah. problems, uh, the renin and things like that, but go ahead. But yeah, uh, and, but these are all b basically common sense type of warnings. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need any uh, double blind study for this and that. You know, when you just think about it, the idea is to minimize exposure to contaminants that are toxin. Uh, um, in, in your experience, I mean, we're going to show uh, uh, some pictures later on about um, the dental equipment we use yeah. and on a, how do you, when you go to a dentist, what do you expect him to do for protecting yourself against the, the, the feelings that come out? Remember that, remember when you go to a dentist, a lot of times, if you look at your towel, uh -huh. it's all splattered with these amalgams, the, the filings. Particular and in the mouth, you notice that there's a lot of things sprayed over the back of the throat and on mm -hmm. the side, underneath the tongue. And sometimes big scrap metals that you just don't happen to suck out, mm -hmm. okay? Re what really happens <coughs> uh, to the body when you swallow all that and the thing going into your nose? And especially even the dentist and his dental assistants are at uh, 
uh, uh, jeopardy. I mean, they, they're, they're afraid of that things going into the air, right? Right. And it falls on a carpet, you get that. And it goes to the air conditioning, you get that. And so it's all around. Vacuum the floor, it goes right. in the vacuum. It goes in the vacuum, <laughs> too. And especially the vacuum is hot. That's and right. it heats up that mercury, and I think more it goes out. Well, the, the, from my uh, rheological experience mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. shipyard, uh, mercury contamination, vapor or particulate, mm -hmm. is very, very similar to radioactive contamination. Mm -hmm. Okay, And uh, you have to understand there are certain uh, engineering things you need to do to prevent ingestion by the workers or the patient in this matter. Yeah. Okay. And um, this is very, very unfortunate because uh, the mercury contamination is probably worse than the radioactive contamination mm -hmm. in terms of how it affects the body's health. Mm -hmm. And the amount that could get ingested if proper safety precautions are not taken, it could be a significant amount. Oh, uh, the worst part is as soon as you hit that burr onto that filling, it goes poof all over. Yeah, sure. Okay, mm -hmm. you have a big what they call a plume all over of particles like and vapor. Yeah, poof right in front of your nose, <laughs> right over your mouth, mm -hmm. and in because your you're in a sup supine position now with a dental chair nowadays, mm -hmm. that you're down, you got gravity against you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th these are all concerns. Um, that uh, you cannot take the callous attitude that, oh, it's only a little bit. That's what I heard a dentist tell a patient. It's only a little bit. I get more than you because I do it every day. Well, the thing, here's the thing that's interesting is, if, how many times have you gone to a dentist and, and, you, and you didn't, if you were asking the dentist for a mouth mirror, and says, lift my tongue up and look underneath the tongue, a lot of times you see scraps of that, not the fine dust with all over your tissues in your mouth, mm -hmm. but the, and you swallow that, and you swallow, what happens when that chunk goes like down your digestive tract? It sticks to the walls of the, right. and then it, then it causes what? Fumes going in there, it kills all the cells there? Well, let's go down one step further in the digestive system. Mm -hmm. What happens if it gets in your intestines? Well, you the get particulates. Oh, you get leaky gut syndrome. You get that. A or lot of times that may cause colon cancer. Colon cancer, because you know what's the big thing is that when it gets down to the colon area, okay, you say, well, how far can it get down there? Well, it can reach down there, and guess what? It eats up into your intestinal walls, and then all these particles go through your bloodstream to the liver. Remember I huh? mentioned it early? Mm -hmm. Stick and eat. Yeah. That's what it'll do, okay? Well, stick it in. We're going to show you some uh, uh, films uh, right now on the picture here. So we're going to show the films right here. And now, Adrian, you see that equipment. What's that called? It's called the uh, Dent Air Vac, or we, some people call it the Elephant Chunk. Okay. Uh, we use equipment similar to that in our radiological work in the shipyard. Mm -hmm. And basically, you want to keep the any kind of toxic contamination away from the person's breathing zone. Okay, so now you see a patient under there, you see the elephant trunk going there. Yes. And then so is that pretty much what most dentists have? No. no. There's only a few handful of dentists that have that equipment. At one time there was only one dentist back in nineteen ninety eight Mm -hmm. that had that equipment. His name is Dr. David Doy mm -hmm. on the Big Island. Well, I had it before him. You had it before him? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't <laughs> know that. Anyhow, well, you see that right yeah. there? What's that rubber thing sticking out of the patient's mouth? Okay, that rubber thing is called a dam. Okay. Oh, the green one is the nit nitro uh -huh. um, versus the late latex. latex. Some people are allergic, some to, people latex. allergic to latex. Yeah. So, you know, and a, a good dentist would use the green one, even though it costs a few cents more, mm -hmm. versus the cheaper latex, which some people may have sensitivity to. Well, so then you have glasses on there, dark glasses. Is that because of the sunlight, or is it because... No, that's because, like I say, it goes poof, and yeah. you have particulates and vapors all over. If it gets in your eyes, that's not a very good okay. 
thing. Okay. So that so then the only thing they can breathe through is the nose, right? Right. And if the elephant trunk doesn't suck out the vapor, it goes to the nose, olfactory tract. Now, if brain. it goes into your nose, if you didn't have the elephant trunk, uh -huh. it one of the shortest paths straight to the brain, uh -huh. and mercury vapor in the brain, I'm sure everybody would agree that that is not a desirable thing. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to show you another picture right here, and we're going to show you a tooth. Okay, here we go. Tooth, uh, all right. And we're going to blow this up here. Okay, now, that's the tooth. And you see it on the top here, right mm -hmm. here, you're going to see that murky filling. Okay. Now, you see this fine lines here? You see the fine lines in there? Mm -hmm. That fine lines is called the denotubules, right? And when that mercury stains the dentine, it starts going through the dental tubules, and guess what's underneath the dental tubules? The dental pulp, pulp the yeah. nerve. The now, when it gets into the dental pulp, it goes all the way down to the bottom, <clears> and you can see the nerve going there. That's what we call the trigeminal nerve. And that nerve just happens to connect to the brain stem called <laughs> the pons. Now, yes. interesting, along, along the line, when the, when the mercury goes and <coughs> travels its way up to the nerves, nerve pathways, Guess what it's doing? It's eating up part of the nerve, all the way to the brain stem. And then they find traces of that through research. They found traces in mice, and then they did one uh, study with uh, in UCLA, UCLA with Dr. Eggleston, and they found that proportionally the mercury in the mouth was found in the in the cells in the brain. brain. So now, and the interesting that when I point it right here, you're going to see a little black spot here. And guess what? This is called accessory canals of the root itself, and it goes into the bone. That's why you see sometimes black areas on your gums called malgum tattoos. Mm. So it's leaking into the bone. Yeah. All right. And also, it can leak down into the bottom of the tooth called the apex where the nerve comes here. <coughs> so it's all around, and your gums can get black, and those areas don't heal very well. You do surgery on it, it doesn't heal very well. Why? Because the mercury. It's usually the cells are dying already, and you're trying to recover it by cutting that out, and it doesn't recover that fast. Well, mm -hmm. the mercury probably is causing necrosis or, you know, um, death of the cells. And so th so yeah. that's basically that. And so we show another picture here, and if you can see that very well, it's all different dental fillings. Now, Adrian, you talked about two different kind of metals together, gold or silver filling. Yes. Guess what that is, right in, um, what are talking about here, right next to each other. You see that there's a silver filling and a gold filling right here. You see the silver filling and a gold, silver filling and a gold filling here. So what happens there when you talk about electrical magnetic current? Well, I, I'd be concerned about um, the, the, what they call, I guess, the lining of the mouth, the mm -hmm. mucosa, they yeah. call it. Um, you know, conditions could happen like, like what they call lichen, plan, lichen planus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with constant irritation from electri electrical activity, the lining of the mouth is adjacent to the teeth that has that activity. Mm -hmm. um, that could cause that precancerous pre condition. Okay. Pre okay. Now. Let's talk about the next area here. Guess what that is? I'll blow, well, maybe you can put that up a little bigger here. And, and here. Now what is that here? Braces. Braces, yeah. Guess what's in braces? Well, is it still nickel? Stain, nickel. Stain nickel is pretty, de pretty toxic. Well, they the they have that uh, look like a nylon plastic material type nowadays. Yeah, I think because people pay a little more. Break. Yeah. yeah, but you see, that, but the band still is stainless steel. Stainless steel, and every stainless is steel nickel. has yeah. nickel in there, yeah. and nickel is very toxic to the well, body. Well, nickel, I think 10% of women are sensitive to or allergic to nickel, and 1% of men. So mm -hmm. you don't want nickel es in your body, especially a person who has allergies, right? Right, or you're chemically sensitive, especially. Can you put this one up? I'd okay. just like to mention one more okay, thing. Okay, one more thing. Well, well, just a minute. Oh, you we, we, we also see right in here. Can you see it here? Let me see. I've got my finger in here. 
And uh, we can bring that up a little bit. Okay, here. You see the feeling we talked about Malcolm tattoos? You see how many people, when you look at your teeth, you can see a gray area there. Yeah. You see the gray area there? That's from the mercury in the fillings going through the microtubules. The, the microtubules called yeah. dentotubules into the enamel. Look what happened. Yeah. So the mercury, and you can see the gums are getting a little red on the end. So it's getting swelling. Okay, yeah. now we're going to show you some other things. We get back. And now what's this so here? What you're saying is basically once you put the mercury filling in, it leaches into the pores of the tooth. And the, the gums too. And the gums. And the bone. It's very difficult to get it out. Okay, what is this here? This is a, a metal-free dentures they're using now. Mm. For some people who can't use metal, but because when you look at the bottom here, if you can see the arrow here, that is what, vitalium or titanium? I mean, uh, um, um, though that metal here is, has beryllium, nickel, cobalt, it's chromium. Oh. But it has all these components in there, yeah. and those metals can cause electrical current too. Yeah, well, it will cause galvanic reaction with any mercury amalgams too, so mm -hmm. that's, you know, the danger of it. And um, then let's talk about this here, that you can see here. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the next show, mm -hmm. about uh, the root canals. And you can okay. see right here, but it shows you what, we're going to show this picture again in the next. But you see an area, black area here, right in there? Well, that black area here and the root canal doesn't go to the end. And we'll talk more about how that can create some mm -hmm. toxicity in the mouth. But getting back to the first slide, we'll talk about this okay. again. Yeah. Can you, can you point to the, um, the bottom corner of the amalgam? Right in here? Yeah. You see, an amalgam is not like a composite. Mm -hmm. A composite is like epoxy glue, so it bonds to the tooth. And it makes it solid, a whole, you know, a whole solid piece. Okay. But amalgam just sits in there and is locked in by the way you drill the hole, which means you have to make it like a counter sum. Like, like, a, like a pyramid. Pyramid, yeah. okay, so that it mechanically locks. Yeah. And then what happens, though, is uh, when you make it with a pyramid or a the bottom corner yeah. of that pyramid, right okay, yeah, point down there, it would become a, sh it actually, you know, this would show more like it, like this, yeah. uh, with a sharper angle, mm -hmm. like this, yeah, okay. okay. This bottom corner mm -hmm. is where you would have a very high tendency for stress fractures. Oh, okay, right underneath the cusp, right here. Right, right underneath at that the cusp. bottom, yeah. yeah. okay. And, and, and um, so, you know, if, if you had to replace that amalgam, which has a service life with the high copper ones mm -hmm. of only maybe eight to 10 years, yeah. and they have to clean out more and grind more on that corner down there, okay, you, you will very, be a higher probability of getting a fracture, you know, as a result of that. Well, interesting thing because, you know, in my profession, I've practiced for 47 years. And when we were taking out amalgams, a lot of times the amalgams get caught underneath the, uh, the corner here, and sometimes the dentists don't see it. And when oh, you take another yeah. x-ray, you see black spots on the x-ray. The they miss the, the yeah. taking all the amalgams out. But what happens when you get this space there, sometimes you can't get the fillings all the way to that corner, you say. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that people get sensitivity to that, oh. like hot and cold. Oh, they, they get, they say, how come I put my filling in sore? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm drinking cold water, it hurts all the time. Or I bite down, it hurts. Because basically, that gap there that creates a problem. And then uh, sometimes when a nerve dies on the corner called the, the purple horn, mm -hmm. it gets pus in there sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then it gets pressure. And then the tooth hurts. Okay, so um, you're talking about that. So let's talk about the next area. Uh, we have some other pictures here, um, and we're talking about, and we will be discussing more of that on the next show, but you can talk about these are implants, and they also have, some, some, some have lead, especially some of the oh. dentists trying to save money, and they send it to China to have the dental work, uh, you know, the dental. The implant. Yeah, implant, well, yeah, and then they have lead in there, they found lead in there. 
Oh, my goodness. And then, so basically what happens around the neck here is where the failure is because you can't clean it, right? It's stuck underneath there, so you get problems with uh, uh, plaque and everything getting in there. And also underneath here, you can get corrosion, okay? And when you have corrosion, so people are trying to say, okay, can we use ceramic implants? And some of them are using ceramic implants, but we haven't found the evidence of, you know, of, of if it's safe or not. Mm -hmm. But, um, and you can see around the neck of this tooth here, this is like the implant, and you have the crown over the implant, and this area here is where you can pick up a lot of corrosion or, or problems with uh, uh, gum infection, okay? And then right in this area, you can see implants being screwed in here. And you know what's interesting? Because I had several patients that had implants on the lower because they couldn't hold a denture down, and right over the eye teeth used to be, mm -hmm. and according to that, that's where the position of the eye teeth is, which is related to the liver. Oh. And I said, well, I had at least four patients We had to take those implants out because all of a sudden the energy was reduced. Yeah. And once we took that out, after a year of time, they said, we got to take it out. I feel so tired since I got the implants and everything. And when they took it out, the energy came back. So amazing. Well, it goes back to the electrical circuits I told you about with mm -hmm. respect to each tooth. Mm -hmm. And if you put something that disrupts the proper electrical flow and levels in that particular circuit. I mean, it's like having a hot spot in your house wiring or, you know, some uh, electrical short or something in the house wiring, mm -hmm. you know, 20 feet away from the switch box. So this is what is basically could happen. You know, the organ gets affected because of the tooth, right? Well, let me show you basically another picture here. Let me show here. And this is just a shot no, that's a nice picture. Picture here, yeah. okay. And you can see how the teeth are related to the organs and, the, and the, we call the vertebrae or the mm -hmm. spine, the muscles, all different type of tissues. And this was founded almost 25 years ago by Dr. Vo in Germany yes, as Dr. a physician. Vo. He was nominated for the Nobel Prize. Yeah, he was a semi-finalist. Yeah. Yes. And so, you know, we're going to go more in detail on the next show mm -hmm. because, you know, we're time constraint. But I just got to show you that if you stress the teeth and you have electrical current, and if it's related to an organ, yeah. like from here to here, T, okay? So what's happened to the organ? The organ gets, keeps getting stressed, getting stressed, getting stressed. Mm -hmm. So the patient will feel that as a symptom, I don't feel too good. They go to a doctor, does all the blood tests, scans, can't find anything, right? And then when you go ahead and take care of the teeth a lot of times, it sort of helps clear it up. And that was an example of some of my patients who had your genital problems, you know? Yeah. And they kept getting problems, and they said, I can't understand it. And you looked at the front teeth, it wasn't too good. It was kind of, you know, it got a lot of decay and things like that. And we, we had to clean them up. We had to take some of that tooth out and clean the bone and put a nice bridge there. And guess what? The your genital problem cleared up. I have many patients like that. See, this, this is, I think, one thing, I hope there's a paradigm shift on this where we have to get doctors to ask quest enough questions. Is mm -hmm. When they, they come in with a liver problem, one of the questions should be, did you have any major dental work done lately? That's right. That's right. So we're going to show more of that. And then here's another picture here we're going to show right here. Okay, this just goes, goes to show you that here's the teeth, and you see all these dots here, and you see all these are related to different organs. So you can see every one of those tooth is related to a particular organ, meridian. Meridian. Meridian, okay. So, uh, Adrian, tell me basically, of all the discussions we've had so far, uh, what's your opinion about people uh, having safe dentistry about people having yeah. safe yeah, i mean in other words uh, are people um, safe for the dentistry in the mouth i mean is it or is it causing or should be we uh, should be well, be alarmed about the dentistry we have today in our, in our mouth oh well to be fair with a dentist yeah. okay mm -hmm. um i i think the dentists are trying to do the best they can sure. with what they're taught mm -hmm. uh, that's the problem is, I think, uh, a system problem where 
um, they're not looking at the whole body. Okay, holistic. And, 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 well, what do, you, what do you call it? Holistic or biological dentistry mm -hmm. or biocompatible dentistry. Um, you have to look at everything when you're dealing with dentistry. You cannot just say, I'm just a, 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 a body fender mechanic that's going to repair a, a hole in the, in the body of the car and that's it. Okay, and that's all I've been trained to do is patch holes. So what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to go more in discussion on our next show, and we're going to be talking more about how you can test people who have toxic metal uh, uh, affecting their body and what organs. And we're going to be showing more, uh, we'll have show more information about that and talk yeah. about that. I, I really believe that, and I went to you myself, mm -hmm. and you did muscle testing on different composites mm -hmm. that before we said, okay, that's the one you're going to put in my mouth. Well, we have high technology now. Well, that's okay. Yeah, you don't need the high technology <laughs> if you can do muscle testing mm -hmm. adequately. Unfortunately, not many people are trained well on how to do muscle testing correctly. That's right. See, many people can do muscle testing, but not many can do it well and consistently. So on the next show, we're going to get, we're going to be actually, we're going to go more into, uh, in fact, a, f a series of these shows talking about toxicity and how you can treat it. How you can treat it, go to a dentist, about, you can go to a dentist and any dentist and ask them if they could do these things. Go to my website called Holistic dentalcare.com holistic dentalcare.com and um, so we're going to be talking more about all these different types of um, therapy that we can do okay okay I, I'd like to just uh, make a closing thing okay. um, one of the things I learned from my years of experience is that uh, when you have a health issue look at the chronological sequence of your dental work that was done over several year period okay. and, and try to integrate it, okay? Thank, well, thank you very much. Okay. We ran out of time, so um, uh, we'll see you on the next show on dental toxicity.